Hey gang, and welcome back to another installment of Design to Move. My name is Ryan Maxwell. Today we're going to be targeting your sternocleidomastoid muscles. They're your superficial cervical flexor muscles, and they contribute to a common distortion syndrome or movement distortion syndrome called forward head posture. We know that as we sit forward or have our head translate forward in relationship to our shoulders, that it creates a lot of excess pressure on the cervical portion of our neck. This leads to impingement, pain, and oftentimes injury. So we wanna make sure that we take out the muscles that are overactive, including the sternocleidomastoid. We're gonna show you how to do that, how to activate and strengthen your deep cervical flexors, and how to integrate it into movement so that you can keep the posture for the long haul. If you have questions, you can reach us at admin at Fluid Health and Fitness. Let's go ahead and get started. This is a self-myofascial release of the sternocleidomastoid muscle using self-palpation. So we're going to be using a technique called self-palpation, which is basically just using our first two fingertips. You want to identify the muscle. It attaches the suboccipital, or the ridge of your skull, down to your clavicle. It helps with cervical flexion. You're going to use your fingertips and push into that muscle, gently kneading it. This is a sensitive area, so don't push too hard. Let's get started. Pressure can be applied through a combination of both pushing and pinching movements. However, due to the sensitive nature of the area and the ability to affect other structures like nerve endings, pinching movements are best. Also, try not to overextend or rotate the neck. Since the carotid artery lays just on top of the muscle, be careful not to press too hard, and if there is any concern or dizziness, discontinue. Once you have identified the muscle, center your head. The sternocleidomastoid is a rope-like muscle found in the front of the neck. They attach behind the ear and run down the front of the neck to attach to the collarbone and breastbone. They primarily bend the neck and head forward, bringing the chin to the chest. They also assist in bending the neck sideways and turning the head. There are multiple tender spots along the length of the muscle. Tightness in these muscles can contribute to headaches, dizziness, and a lack of balance. By reducing the tension in the muscles, these symptoms can dissipate. Okay, let's move on. This is a static stretch of the sternocleidomastoid muscle using just body weight. So now that we've used self palpation to help break open any collagen cross bindings and inhibit the muscle, we wanna see if we can lengthen the fibers. So keeping the shoulder blade drawn down and back, we're gonna look up as far as, as comfortably available, and then you're going to turn your head the opposite direction of the muscle that we just targeted, the right side. Let's go ahead and get into it. Because the muscle crosses over so many joints, it can be hard to stretch, or even to identify how to stretch it. A simple rule of thumb is to turn the head to the opposite side of the muscle being stretched, then rotate the head to the same side that should act to release the muscle. As it's a very sensitive area, make sure not to overextend the neck or stretch to the point of pain. Reducing the tension in it will help in aiding your deep cervical flexors to increase their own strength. This can reduce headaches and pain. Let's move forward. This is an isolated strengthening of your cervical flexors using a stability ball. Okay, so now that we've taken out the superficial flexors of the neck, the sternocleidomastoid, by releasing and lengthening it, we want to get into the deep cervical flexors using a stability ball. So in a quad position on all fours, we're going to place the ball on the wall and then pin the ball between the wall with our head. Now on all fours with our shoulders drawn back, soft elbows, you're going to let your neck extend and then pull it back in, tucking the chin. That sets us up, let's get started. Make sure to brace your shoulders in a protracted and depressed position to get more activation out of the deep cervical flexors. As you lift your head up, keep your gaze straight ahead and tuck your chin in, making sure to finish the movement by tucking your chin deep into your chest. There should be several skin folds like a double chin. Resist the tendency to tilt your head upwards at the top of the movement. Keep a controlled pace. Let your chin drop down towards the floor as you return to your beginning position. The longus capitis and longus coli make up your deep cervical flexors. 
Weakened deep flexors lead to forward head posture. This places a tremendous amount of pressure on the cervical spine. That's why it's important that we isolate and strengthen these deep flexors. Okay, let's wrap it up and move forward. This is an integrated strength movement targeting the cervical flexors and thoracic extensors using just body weight. So now that we've released the sternocleidomastoid, activated our deep cervical flexors, we want to integrate this into a more global movement. That's going to require us to use our thoracic extensors and cervical flexors together. It's going to help to create more centrated position of our head over our ribcage. To do that, we're going to lay on the ground. You're going to start by pulling the arms back behind you into scapular retraction and then drop the head down, pulling it back up just like we did on the ball and then start over again. Let's get started. Make sure to lead up through the shoulder blade first before raising the arms. Try not to shrug the shoulders. With the shoulders in a brace position, allow your head to drop down towards the floor leading through the chin. This will create a gentle cervical extension. By retracting the shoulder blade, you'll be able to reduce pressure on the cervical extensors that reduce the capacity of the deep cervical flexors. Co-contraction of the scapular stabilizers with the cervical flexors will help to establish proper alignment and the posture of the trunk and neck. Nice work, next movement. This is a strength movement targeting the thoracic extensors using body weight using a cobra position. So now that we've released the sternocleidomastoid, activated our deep cervical flexors, and then engaged it into the posture muscles of the thoracic extensors and cervical flexors, we wanna get into a strength position. We're gonna go into a bent over cobra position, hinging through your hips with your feet shoulder width apart, Tip your hips back, keeping your back nice and straight at the lower spine. From there, with your palms in a neutral position, draw your arms behind the body, pulling your shoulder blades in towards the center while externally rotating the thumbs behind you. Keep the chin centered and again, retract it against gravity. Let's get started. Try to mobilize the lower body while completing this movement. There should be no movement through the hips, lower back, or knees. Try to maintain a slight flexion in the abdominals the whole time. Breathe out as you bring the arms behind the body and in as they return to the beginning position. Maintain constant pressure on the scapular stabilizers and external rotators of the arm. The rationale behind this exercise is to strengthen the scapular stabilizers and cervical flexors in a standing position so as to help integrate it into a day-to-day -day movement. That brings us to the end. Let's tackle the other side. This is the self myofascial release of the sternocleidomastoid on the left side of the body using self palpation. Once again, you're gonna use your fingertips. Identify the length of the superficial muscle. Remember, clavicle up to the temporal or suboccipital region. Push into the muscle gently and then begin kneading. Let's get started. If there is any pain or tension around the side of the head and it is increased when you apply pressure or pinch the sternocleidomastoid, you know you're on the right track for reducing the symptom. Apply pressure until you feel the pain start to reduce. These muscles suspend the head from being tilted backwards. Since many of us work in front of a computer and the majority of us use a cell phone, we place the neck unintentionally in an extended position asking the sternocleidomastoids to have to balance the tension. This tug of war at the base of the skull can lead to headaches, lack of balance, and blurred vision. 
Reducing the tension in the muscles through self-massage can aid in reducing the symptoms and help you to regain the right posture. Let's move forward. This is a static release of your sternocleidomastoid muscle on your left side of the body using just body weight once again. So remember, the sternocleidomastoid is a cervical flexor and it tilts the head to the side and it rotates to the opposite direction. So we're gonna do the opposite of that. You're gonna tilt your head up and look gently over, rotating just gently to the other side. Make sure to keep your shoulder blade down and back so that your clavicle remains still. Let's get into it. Turning the head to the opposite side, then rotating the head to the same side should work to release the muscle. When stretching, try to keep your shoulder anchored so that the collarbone and breastbone don't raise up. Doing activities which ask you to turn your head to one side for long periods of time can contribute to a tightening of the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Also, side lying sleeping on an overstuffed pillow can do the same thing. As these are accessory respiratory muscles, meaning they assist with breathing, if you are a chest breather and have a hard time using your diaphragm and intercostals, this can also increase the stress on the sternocleidomastoid. Learning how to breathe deeply through the diaphragm or laterally through the ribs will assist in reducing the pressure on these muscles. Okay, let's move on. This is an isolated strengthening of your deep cervical flexors using just a stability ball. Okay, so we've already opened up the sternocleidomastoid on the left side. We've lengthened it. Now we want to get into our deep cervical flexors that pull our chin back that help to create centration of the head over the rib cage. So using a stability ball, get into a braced position on all fours, bracing the ball between your head and the wall with your palms shoulder width apart and soft to the shoulders. Extend the head down towards the floor in a straight line, gazing straight down, and then pull the chin, tucking it back up in at the top of the movement. That gets us ready, let's get into it. Don't let your shoulders shrug while doing the movement, and try to keep your hips in a neutral position by keeping your glutes flexed. Deep neck flexor muscles are designed to support the head and stabilize the neck. Weakness in the deep neck flexors can disrupt the stability of your upper spine, leading to a forward head posture and chronic neck pain. When they work as they should, the surrounding neck muscles are free to function in the right order. When they don't, muscles like the sternocleidomastoids have to kick in to provide the lacking stability. Okay, let's move on. This is an integrated strength movement isolating the cervical flexors and thoracic extensors using just body weight. So once again, we've released the sternocleidomastoid, the superficial cervical flexor. We've activated our deep cervical flexors, and now we want to integrate it into a movement that's going to help us with our posture. So we're going to lay down on the ground. We're going to start the movement by drawing your arms up off the ground, retracting the shoulder blades and going into thoracic extension. From there, you're gonna drop your head down towards the floor and then pull it back in, tucking in the chin, going into cervical flexion, and then drop it back down to the floor again. And we would start from there. Let's go ahead and begin. A common compensation make when completing this movement is to use their lower back extensor muscles excessively. Try to maintain a braced lower back or lumbar by flexing your abdominals. That will keep the focus on the thoracic extensors and shoulder stabilizers. By learning how to coordinate the co-contraction of both the cervical flexors with the scapular stabilizers, you will be able to enhance your posture and allow the right sets of muscles to create the movements in these areas.
Nice work, next movement. This is a strength movement targeting your cervical flexors and thoracic extensors using just body weight in a cobra position. So now that we've again opened up the sternocleidomastoids, we've activated the deep cervical flexors and integrated it into a thoracic extension with cervical flexion, we want to get down and actually strengthen between the shoulder blades to pull our shoulders back. So we're going to tip our hips, bringing our body weight down as low as we can without losing the arch in our back with our arms drawn forward. Pull the shoulders back and then roll the arms, initiating the retraction through the shoulder blades, externally rotating the arms behind you, bringing them back down nice and slow. Let's go ahead and get into it. Make sure to keep the thumbs pointed forward at the beginning of the position or neutral, then rotate the arms into a supine or facing up position at the end of the movement. That will target the external rotators of the arm, which are often weak or inhibited. Try not to protract the shoulders in the beginning position. Keep tension in the scapular stabilizers through the whole movement. As you bring your arms behind you, focus on co-contracting your abdominal muscles to reduce the pressure on the lower back. Understanding how to coordinate the right sets of muscle firing patterns associated with the proper alignment of the neck and shoulders is of critical importance for full body neuromuscular efficiency. Where the head goes, so will the body. That brings us to the end, let's wrap it up. So this brings us to the end of another installment of Design to Move. This time we focused on the sternocleidomastoid. These are cervical flexors that contribute to that maladaptive movement profile forward head posture. Remember, where your head goes, so will your body. It's very important that we are able to develop the posture muscles that keep our head centered over our rib cage. If you have questions on any of the information we went over tonight, make sure to reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Remember, your body's designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next time.